My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on the show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. All right, guys, welcome to Property Profits Podcast. I'm your host, Bryce Kaminsky, filling in for Dave Dubow. And have you ever wondered what it's like to turn a former school into a thriving apartment building or transform a single family home into a cash flowing property? Today, my guest, Vlad Majewski of Forward Investments has done just that from quitting the nine to five to completing marathons. Vlad brings a unique perspective to the real estate development side of things in Simcoe, Durham, Windsor. I'm super excited to dive into his journey today. Vlad, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack here, but what really strikes me, tell us a little bit about this apartment building uh, from a former school. How did that get, how did that happen? Well, once I heard about this opportunity, I jumped straight, straight on because this is, because this is something that attracts me uh, transformation, especially converting former commercial into residential. And I've heard about this. I know that a lot of investors are doing this. Um, and then once that uh, opportunity fell into my laps, I thought, okay, this is, I definitely need to pursue. And at this point, it, we, we only started this project this year and it's still on the early, early phases. Mm -hmm. but I'm really excited and looking forward uh, to it in the future, like how it comes out. Yeah, lofts and old warehouses and churches in some cases, you know, they got a, a lot of square footage, but they're mostly just halls or uh, at least with the school, you probably have some like actual rooms and things like that to cut it down, you know, a classroom per unit, something like that should make it interesting. But so, let's rewind it. Yeah, let's rewind to the beginning and say, what got you started in real estate? What got you excited about it and, you know, eventually got you passionate about it? Well, frankly, uh, we kind of started by accident uh, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then we saw the power over the years, the power, how it can fix the mistakes or even sometimes lack of knowledge. As, as long as you hold on to it long enough, mm -hmm. those things can be, um, can be fixed. And when we got into it, um, we, we, had a part, we had a partner, we were just money partners, but we didn't know about it mm -hmm. like, at all, anything. And our active partner, working partner, uh, they didn't know much, to be honest, um, how to do things properly, didn't have mm -hmm. system and whatnot. And we ended up taking over at some point, holding on to it uh, over a period of about 10 years. And once, when we saw the market was taking off and whatever, uh, whatever troubles we were in, um, we overcame, it's kind of um we felt a huge huge uh, bonus of you know holding on to it um and in the end of the day it gave us a real great boost and it was like a stepping stone so after we got out that unfortunate project which we were in by accident we started building on we got into networking groups we started getting i started getting a lot of education um and that is a huge, huge education. Very, mm -hmm. very important. And then after that, deliberately and intentionally started uh, building a portfolio. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes accidental investor, you know, you, you invest with someone and you have to step in um, and clean up the mess. And you, you're right, you know, if you hold on to something, uh, instead of just getting fed up and ex exiting the deal, you can usually turn that thing around. Time will turn a deal around um, as long as you don't give up. Because I would always say to you know people I would be mentoring, I'd say, look, you only quit, you only lose when you quit in this business. And when you quit on a deal, you quit on yourself, you're going to lose. But if you hold on and you just say, I'm not quitting today, I'm going to hold this property for 10 years, it's going to turn itself around, even the worst mistake. So you had to learn a little bit um, right out the get go. So now that you've gotten that education, um, 
what has really because i see you've invested here and there and um eventually that has moved you to quitting your nine to five so tell me a little bit more about the different places you've invested and what it's like to invest outside of your of your home market well frankly i never had a luxury of investing in my own backyard because mm. where we live it's it's just too expensive to it doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. And um, what I target usually around one hour um, from my home, mm -hmm. which is not too far of a drive. The exception is Windsor. Mm -hmm. It was a bit, a bit of um, a different story. However, most of what, what, where I invest is uh, cl close nearby. Mm -hmm. And um, one, of the, uh, one of the criteria to select was it, we got it through the rain or rain canada where i was mm -hmm. a member for a number of years and this was mm -hmm. the first investment club that i was a part of in 2015 mm -hmm. and uh, they usually run every year as, like statistic and research of uh, best um, best towns in Ontario to invest and go to and this is how I decided okay one would be I even started with Kitchener uh, KWC Kitchener and Cambridge mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. properties there but since uh, already sold those and profited really nicely from those but again let's try to get a little bit closer and, and now mostly the focus is um, Simco and I'm also almost exiting Durham uh, just try to more focus in, in one area rather than many because it's much easier to it's much better to be an expert in one area to be honest mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. investing what's interesting is those areas like kitchener waterloo cambridge have really blown up so if you bought in before it was cool to do so um you know people are making serious money exiting from that even just holding it and refining refine but you're right, you know, there's lots of markets and, you know, by the time you invest in, hopefully you're not at the peak of these markets and uh, you can actually capitalize on it. So with all uh, that you've done in real estate so far, what would you say your biggest challenges these days? Well, these days, of course, uh, the dry, <clears throat> the cash flow that we've, we've built from our, from our portfolios. Mm -hmm. It's kind of much, much drier now because I'm, I'm watching right now and doing an accounting and bookkeeping and see last year from last year to today's it's it's much, much um, kind of um, less, less and less attractive yeah. situation. Um, yeah. And we have to try to still hold on to as much as, as possible to the asset that we got because it's all temporary. Mm -hmm. We already see the interest rate cuts. We already see that uh, the stock market's already kind of pivoted and we expect same with real estate, which is typically lagging, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. um, some of the assets. And, and uh, again, it shows um, how well we structured our portfolio because most everything is still ca cash flow positive, except the project, for example, which was meant for something else, um, which yeah, which which kind of draws a little bit uh, money monthly and, and bleeding at the point at the moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have to admit that. Uh, however, the, it was a project meant for development that the property wasn't meant to a uh, cash flow well. But the other ca the other properties, um, we're lucky we didn't get anything on the peak. We rather actually uh, exited some of the poor performing properties very timely, mm -hmm. and capitalized really really well. Um, and now the challenging times, it, it, it's actually showing great lessons for the future that sometimes uh, even the buyer's market could be the way it is right now without much, without too many buyers. Mm -hmm. It's hard to liquidate real estate. So you have to, you cannot always expect that you can easily sell and liquidate. You, you rather have to prepare yourself and make sure that you have access to uh, to some capital, uh, some liquid assets, just in case mm -hmm, uh, something mm -hmm. happens, because properties are properties. You they, they always may some something may always come up, right? You have mm -hmm. to have enough cash for it. Yeah, and but I'm but I'm pretty sure we're not too far. We're, I'm I'm pretty sure we are we're close to a recovery phase now. So 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing as well as uh, rate cuts and um, appreciation. So, you know, for people listening, you should start looking at buying things because things are, especially in the Ontario market, it's going to become even harder to afford. The prices are going to re recover and double up. You know, everyone's waiting on the sidelines for rate cuts to start buying, and there's not going to be magically more properties when they decide that they want to buy them. So, um, you know, now is the time really um, to start looking at buying buying property. You know, the curve is is coming. So, what are you doing right now to fund your deals? Well, right now, um, this year we didn't buy anything except um, our project. The first year we pretty much uh, were not as active on the buying side. Mm -hmm. We only purchased uh, our school project uh, mm -hmm. for conversion and focused on that. And But mostly um, I'm trying to restructure existing portfolio and exit some of the, uh, some of the project projects that uh, were started prior, you know, all this uh, bad times started to happen. Mm -hmm. And so this is uh, what, what I'm trying to do. And uh, right now, I'm also uh, working on conversion of, of the triplex, um, triplex conversion. So it's it was a purposely built duplex with a huge, huge um, upper unit and two stories. So we making that, a you know, each store will be in a separate unit. So making it a triplex. And um, it, it's coming along really, really nicely. And next a month, I believe, like well, probably end of January, we'll have it already uh, completed. And that will be cash flowing uh, with the market rents because it's going to be all vacant and available to get a market new tenants, market rents. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's going to be an amazing property. It's huge, huge units, uh, beautiful, very so with um, with what you've done so far, raising capital, because you're looking into the next year, what are your plans for 2024 and 2025? Uh, yeah, so one of the things, of course, to stabilize everything, um, and I do expect some of the rate cuts uh, coming, but I'm not really counting on that. It's going to turn all my portfolio from not from a low cash flow to high cash flow, for example. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm trying to do is uh, restructure, create as, as much cash flow from, from what, what I have and uh, either liquidate the poor performing uh, if ne if necessary, and uh, focus, of course, on the uh, continuing our school school project. And then, so this is the minimum, and of course, um, we'll see depending on the situation and um, the and the market uh, and and availability uh, of funds and investors that we can um, join forces with um, for additional projects that we can go with. And but I prefer focus on the new apartments, new build, new apartment buildings, uh, even if, if they're smaller ones. So this is something that um, I'll be uh, directing my focus at. Multifamily, moving to multifamily. The more into the multifamily space. So when, you know, we talked before the show about the fact that you have investors and you have have a, a good amount of them um, from your close network, what are you doing to grow your investor pool outside of that close network? Well, um, I'm definitely uh, attending a lot of networking events, uh, working with um, trying to put out as much of a content on Instagram as, as I can right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not pushing too hard at this moment because again, I'm trying to, um, you know, create Stabilize. a little space uh, because right now my plate is a bit, um, uh, there's a lot of things that I have to juggle. However, mm -hmm. um, next year, this is something that I'd like to, uh, to, act, to be more active at. And of course, I'm quite excited about the, um, go that government already, already allow 
us to build and not charge HST. They uh, created that relief from mm. that. And you don't have to pay HST on new construction, which is a huge, huge thing. Mm -hmm. um, and considering how expensive the build costs and construction costs. So that is uh, something that will definitely help. And with the softening of interest rates, I think it will be a great, great opportunity to dive into these new construction projects, new apartments. Yeah, because a lot of people don't look at construction as something sensitive to the interest rate but a lot of those builders um they're getting loans and a lot of the investors these are loans to construct these things and if the interest makes the deal no good then they're just not building it and the housing crisis continues so having a break even just on the on the hst is huge to kind of soften the construction cost um you know if you're filling something that's a million bucks uh, 12% of a million is not a small amount. So definitely uh, it does help everything, every little bit that we can get to to kind of soften the construction costs. Because really, I mean, we need more houses. We need more people um, creating this multifamily thing. So when, you know, for people to invest significant amounts of capital, let's say with you to build these apartments or convert these buildings, they ultimately t need to like, know, and trust you. What are you doing to kind of build those categories up for people to, you know, take take you in in that sense? Um, I'm just being transparent and trying to be authentic, right? We, what else is out there? I'm just doing the work, showing what I'm doing, showcasing it, and yeah, I like that answer. That's that's a good. One. I'm just being me, and then if you like me, get to know me. And if you know me, you probably end up trusting me because I'm just a transparent guy. I like that. So one one final question I have for you, you know, Robert Kiyosaki calls it the unfair advantage. You know, what comes easy to you that other people might find difficult to do? Uh, unfair advantage. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, a lot of, some people will say, oh, I'm good with people or, some people will say I'm good with numbers. You know, I had a CPA on the call and she's like, oh, I'm good with numbers. That's my unfair advantage. I, I went to, I have a CPA. So when it comes to real estate, what do you find that comes easy to you that other people might be like, oh, I don't want to do that? Well, probably I, I would say problem solving and uh, energy and optimism, you know, that. Ultimately, I'm, I, I don't give up and some, some of the project may not look as, as good maybe in some certain stage, but I'm still keep pushing. So I would say, yeah, consistency, perseverance. Nice. I like yeah. that answer. Can, <laughs> I'm a consistent, transparent, and per persistent guy who gets it done and isn't willing to lose. I'll hold it for 10 years if I have to. Well, sure. if people uh, if people want to connect with you, they want to find out more, they ultimately want to maybe become part of one of your projects, how do they connect with you? What should they do? It's it's very easy. Right now, my, my handle is here. It's um, forwardinvestments underscore CA. I'm at Instagram. Very easy to get uh, hold of me or message me. Always happy to answer or my email is also very, very easy. It's Vlad at forwardinvestments.ca. Very easy to get hold of me. Perfect, perfect. Well, I really appreciate you stopping by and giving people a little perspective on uh, what it's like to do business in the Ontario market once again. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next episode. My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on this show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode, and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com.
Now at moneypartnerformula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit moneypartnerformula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.